Well, how many days? We're real close to chat. Seventy point three. Close. Three days ish out. It's May the nineteenth, two thousand twenty-two. Welcome aboard, everybody. This is the Crushing Iron Podcast, and this is episode five hundred and eighty-three. Yep, I had to double check, double check, triple check. It is uh, chatting seven point three week. It is a steamy. <laughs> Yeah. Steamy day here yeah, uh, today and tomorrow. I walked. I learned the hard way. You did learn the hard way. I walked downstairs and you were rocking the hoodie. I don't know if you're doing some heat acclimation or what, but getting a good sweat and a good lather going. Yeah, no, I'm not doing any uh, of that. You're not doing any of that. We'll go into that here a little bit. Uh, for those of you <laughs> <laughs> tuning in for your first time, <laughs> oh, man. welcome. We appreciate you tuning in and giving us your time. We know you have a lot of options in the triathlon podcast universe and just podcasts in general. Your time is very valuable, so we appreciate you tuning in today. We cover it all. We'll do swim, bike, and run specific podcasts. We'll do race recaps like we probably will next week. We'll do race previews like we did on Tuesday. Uh, but for the most part, Mike and I as coaches, athletes, best friends, we just sit back, relax, have an open, honest discussion about what we're going through in life, uh, both as uh, or as coaches, athletes, and, and also just human beings on this planet. We'll also talk a lot about what our athletes are going through. We work with a a wide range of athletes uh, from beginner level athletes looking to their very first sprint all the way up through elite level amateurs trying to get back to uh, Kona and everyone in between and not just everyone in between, but from all over uh, the majority, obviously here in the U S but from all over like West coast to East coast, we got quite a few Canadians. We got people across the pond. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for uh, for coaching, go to our website and check out that. Um, but we'll use the uh, feedback we get from them and just the uh, overall conversations and training peaks comments and uh, communication to drive the uh, topic of the day. We'll also occasionally go into our Facebook group, which is a very lively and informative community. You can search on that again on Facebook, crushing iron group, answer one simple question. Don't just say, yeah, I get that. Like, what do you like the most of the podcast? Yes. That's not going to cut it. Like at least just make <laughs> something up. Like if you don't even like the podcast, just say, you know, I, I like that you talk about swimming. Enter. <laughs> don't, don't just take the, the the lazy way around. Yes, or uh, but, but yeah. one guy that said nothing. He's, he did say nothing, and you know I'm, I can't remember what your name was, but yeah, you weren't invited back in <laughs> or Aaron in general. Because um, the hook, man. Yeah, it just it just come on. We 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 keep the bar low, and we have to considering uh, how we do the podcast. But we'll go in there on occasion and uh, do a Q and A, or just kind of take the pulse of the community. Uh, if you're in there, participate. It's it's a great group, uh, willing to. Uh, Lend a hand and answer a lot of questions for um, beginners, uh, but also uh, seasoned veterans and, and everyone in between. So we'll do that. Um, but that's it. We don't do sponsors. We most certainly don't do ads. The only engine that we have is to keep you happy and healthy in your endurance sports journey. Yeah. Hopefully it's going well because we got a lot of people coming in to race. A lot. I, I didn't, I guess, fully grasp the amount of people we have doing Chattanooga 70.3 this year until we posted until I got the race roster back. Uh, from summer, all the coaches put them in. I was like, wow, that is quite the page. Uh, it is yeah. a, it's extensive. I think it's, it's easily 60 plus. Oh, um, 60? yeah, I think it's around 55, 60 plus coming in town. Um, the event itself is gigantic. I mean, it's like 3,500, 4,000. I think back when they did, uh, 70.3 world championships as the first two day event here in Chattanooga, I think that was 17 or 18. Uh, it was close to five. I was spread out with the course. It's just the, the course is, is, is spread out great. It's a little bit crowded, but yeah, there's a lot of people coming into town. I, I noticed yesterday I went to the Y and I kind of shared this little story on our, our clo on our uh, crushing iron Facebook uh, page. I went to the Y around eh, one or one thirty. It's been packed lately. Everybody's kind of doing there. There's, there's a pretty good scene here in town. Um, they kind of keep it themselves, but there's a, there's a pretty good scene. A lot of people, but the downtown Y is the place to swim. It's a great pool. Um, but yesterday I rolled on the pool deck and I'm like stretching out. I'm like, ah, I got the whole pool to myself at the downtown Y. What? And I'm like, mm, I'm about to be the man today. I'm going to be the fastest guy in the pool. I got no one else in here to judge me. Yep. And then get in the water, put my cap Amorf on. Came in. Well, close. Uh, you bet. <laughs> honestly, faster. Um, put on, uh, put on my swim cap. I'm, I'm stretching a little bit, just kind of soaking in the fact that you've got a pool all to yourself. And in walks in Paula Finley and Eric Lagerstrom. And I was like, cool. That lasted all for about two seconds. And we swam uh, three lanes side by side by side. And they're fucking incredible. I mean, like it, we've talked about Paula Finley before when she won Challenge Miami and her, her old story from um, coming back from a, kind of an Olympic disappointment in Canada and kind of being honestly shunned from that federation. And But they both have their own podcast and their own kind of YouTube channel. It's, that's really cool. Super down to earth uh, athletes. But they were... 
if you ever want to feel slow, swim next to a professional. Like if you want to really understand, obviously like you can, you can be on the, on the course, right. And, and you get, you know, if it's a, if it's a multi-loop course, a lot of times if you've raced in a professional field on that, on that second loop, you can really get a good feel for just how fast these, these men and women ride their bike. Like they'll just come flying by you. Like you're standing still mm-hmm. and it's sound. it is, it's, it's, the, it's the sound and they were just hauling. I mean, they were, I, I stopped to take a, a heavy, heavy breather in between a few of my fifties just to kind of clock it. They were cruising at like 31, 32 second fifties. Like, it, so they're doing like, that's like one Oh four, one Oh six hundreds kicking it just cruising it um got in I, I didn't say anything because i'm sure they get stopped like all the time mm. um it was cool it was cool to just kind of be in there some of them but they were they were flying it, but it really was interesting to watch just how absolutely fast they are getting in got their work done got out and left and um they yeah it was but it was yeah it was it was fast this the whole city i, I came i went and swam again this morning um, and the pool is getting packed with a lot of out of towners coming in, got their Ironman gear on, ready to go. So it is, the city really does welcome it compared to a lot of other cities. Um, but a lot of people are coming in town, a lot of rumors about the water temp inside scoop. I'm just going to tell you right now, it ain't going to be wetsuit legal. I'm going to call it right He's now. He's calling I'm it. Calling it. I'm, I'm, I'm still think it is. It's not, it's not going to be wetsuit. It's, it's going to be 90 today and it's going to be 90 again. It's going to be. 90 on Friday and Saturday. And then the, and the storms that are coming in aren't going to come in until around noon on Sunday, uh, uh, what they're saying right now. No, so no, the, the cold front isn't really going to have that. Huge. So I, I'm calling no wetsuit swim. Um, and before we kind of go into the, the topics of the day, I will go ahead and tell you, it's the, all more of the reason to get in the water ASAP because a lot of people will be worried because Friday looks clear, Saturday looks clear, Sunday and honestly, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, <laughs> it looks like, you know, thunderstorms and chances of rain. You don't want to be because we've had we both had you know plenty of athletes you probably know people before that have that have done races and the course has been like postponed and suspended like mid like they just sort of by to stop basically and like you 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 hover or whatever if the storms are, are are bad that's the thing about the south though is once you hit May first there's almost a chance of storms every single day um, basically from now until September but the way the forecast is looking in my trusty Wonderground uh, it doesn't look like they're coming into around eleven or twelve so get your ass in the water that way you're at least on the run course. So get in the water, be one of the first in line. Uh, I will say this, and I'll tell us to our group of athletes uh, Saturday after our little bike run session, before we head over to daily ration for breakfast is, uh, um, I would, depending on what the forecast is, bring an extra bottle, maybe and an extra snack just in case, because you know, a lot of times like uh, Des Moines 70.3 last year was the inaugural year for that. They had real bad storms roll in. Oh, delay. Yeah, delayed for like three hours. Mm. And that really, really sets off or, or, or um, messes up people's kind of morning nutrition and fueling for the day. And then it ended up being really, really, really hot because it was hot. It was humid already. Then they postponed it. So you're not starting to swim till 9, 30, 10. They did shorten the bike course. But just just something to think about, you know, as the, as the rest of the weekend comes on, the race is going to go off without a hitch. It'll be fine. But just small things like that, no matter what race you're doing, if you look at the weather, you don't need to pay panic, just be prepared, right? Like a lot of people would just panic about, oh my God, I didn't bring a wetsuit or do I do a swim skin or should I, you know, buy a $300 swim skin, you know, the, the day before the race or, you know, what do I do if the race is, you know, postponed, like pack accordingly, like set yourself, set yourself up for, um, up for success. So do that. Um, and just, and just be prepared. It'll be a great day. And, uh, we are looking forward to seeing everybody. If you're going to be in town, uh, racing, spectating, or just doing whatever. Come see us. We'll be at the expo two to seven on Friday, ten to four on Saturday. Have a bunch of gear, a um, bunch of awesome gear to uh, to sell. So come see us. Uh, we got a good sale going on, but come say hi, uh, rep some of our gear, and most importantly, come say hello. Come say hello. Uh, before we move on, I want to go back to your little why escapade. Yeah. <laughs> Where, did you, I just? I'm just curious if, uh, like, in between when you saw him in there, and mm-hmm. did you? Did you pull your bag over and pull those Swedes out? That you're, <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. Swede I goggles. Don't, I, no, I didn't pull Just any. <laughs> no, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to even pretend to elevate the ability that I'm currently swimming with. Like I'm not. I'm getting in some pretty. This is my fourth straight week to actually hit three swims a week, which is a, a record for me in the last year and a half. I've been in a really good groove in general in training, but also in the pool. But I, I, I just wanted to be respectable. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to draw any attention for how many times I was getting lapped. You know, I was cruising. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did 
Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There, there, there are a couple hundreds and two hundreds where I really kind of pushed it. And then I stopped to do, to do my fifties. And I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to kind of save face here. And so I was, I was like, man, I need, I need to kind of prove them. I was like, they don't give a shit. They're just worried about getting their session in. And they, they kind of looked over a few times looking at me. It wasn't cause I was swimming fast. It was cause like, I wonder if they're going to recognize me and say something. And I did. I just didn't, I'm sure they get stopped all the time. And I'm just kind of one of those guys that doesn't stop people. I'm like, you know, go live your life. I'm sure you're you more can. famous than they are. I'm sure that's definitely not true. <laughs> <laughs> and, but no, I, I didn't, I didn't grab hey, the Swedes. You, Robbie? Uh, I didn't grab the Swedes, but then they left and I had to pull back to myself again. So I was like, ah, here we go I'm back. I am the man. Um, How long did they go? Oh, they, 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 I'd probably say 2,000, 2,400. That's what I have to guess. They did, okay. they did a, they did a couple of really solid three, four hundreds. Um, they, they were just moving. They probably did them on, whew, they probably did them on 430 interval. I mean, they were moving, um, very quickly. Uh, Eric was, he was, he was a little bit faster than Paul, but they're both very, very, very good swimmers. Eric is always kind of one of the top five, six coming out of the, of the male pro field. Uh, and I will say like, if you, even, I think it's, it's, I know the race can be broadcast on outside TV. The, the race really is pretty st- pretty solid it's one of the better pro races they've they've had here outside the world championships uh men's field a lot of a lot of people jackson laundry who um won oceanside 70.3 even though you would think he got seventh uh because lionel sanders gets all the coverage um even as a fellow canadian um he'll be he'll he'll be here tim o'donnell it's his first race kind of real race back um from his heart attack scare and kind of getting off i think I watch one of his videos. He's getting off, uh, just getting off blood thinners. So he's getting outside and doing some few things. Ooh. So, um, really hope that he, he and and his wife, Marty Carefer, both have a great a great race. But it, it's a st- pretty stacked field. Um, it'll be really really fun to watch. Um, uh, Miranda's how, racing too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How are you feeling about the race? Um, we, before we go into that, <laughs> I want to ask you a quick question. Yeah, I feel uh, like you're delaying. It's like we only have like fifty. Did 50 you notice minutes. anything that those pros were doing that we can? You know, that nice tip that an age grouper can implement this weekend. Uh, maybe not implement this weekend, but I will tell you that I did notice something. So one of my favorite, one of, one of my f- reasoning, one of the reasons I have for giving so many 25s and 50s mm-hmm. is because it lets athletes play with technique. You know, what works and what doesn't work without kind of getting lost. And then, you know, you're, you can hold form for a 25, right? So one of the reasons, especially when you're kind of getting back in the, in the pool or getting, like for myself 25s, 50s are, and, and sometimes 100s are my bread and butter because it gives me a chance to, you know, sw- swim pretty steady, you know, without kind of getting super, super fatigued to where my body starts sinking or I'm not hitting my numbers or, or, or I, my, my form falls apart, but I can start to play with things. And so it, one of the things I was working with last week was my head positioning uh, and how that, that effect, because, you know, you can, you can change one thing, at least if you're paying attention, right? Because that's what the, the greatness of 25s and 50s is, is you can focus for a 25. You can focus on one thing, do it for 25, stop, right? Hit your watch. You see what your interval you're, you're on. And then if you think it's working or not working, maybe change something up. So I was doing that last week, but then I, after I saw specifically Eric swimming, I was like, man, his, he doesn't have, you know, some, some athletes like Katie Ledecky, for example, obviously one of the best athletes on the planet has a little bit of a pause, like an out front. She has a gallop stroke. She's a little bit of a pause out front. He has nothing. Like it is just straight. He gets into his stroke without his without his hand ever on each side, either kind of hovering or waiting to catch. And that's that's what was one of the things that I noticed uh, watching him. And it was one of the things that I woke uh, I, I focused on this morning for my own. So I was doing some fifties, and then I did my nor- I did two fifties kind of normal. Then my, my third fifty, I focused on my head positioning, which which bringing my head a little bit higher. A lot of people think that you have to have your head like pointing down, but what a lot, what a lot happens to a lot of athletes is they kind of bend their neck. So water comes over top of you, which means more of your body is submerged, making you slower. So one of the things that I did was raise my, um, t- tilt my head positioning up a little bit. And I was, I was doing 40 second 50. So it's not, it's not terribly. So it's, it's average about 120 for hundreds. But when I made the small change for, um, the head positioning, I dropped down to like a 38, 39, which is, which is for a, a second or second half is a pretty good clip for a 50. Right. And then the last thing I did after watching them yesterday was just a reminder of my right hand tends to kind of hover out in front for a minute. Um, and what, what I was trying to focus on today and then yesterday after kind of watching and after they left was if I, my hand kind of hovers, like, you know, like you're pointed straight out, but as soon as I see it kind of move to the right, like I'm going to start my catch, 
Um, I know I'm kind of getting through and like st- not starting and stopping, but kind of starting and continuously momentum. So that's what I focused on uh, yesterday afternoon and then today. And I clipped off a 35 uh, just by doing getting into my strokes. And I think I probably got, I think I got one more stroke per 50. So my turnover was a much higher, obviously the, the, the flip coin of that is that you're, my effort was a lot higher, right? My, my, I was, I was certainly, I was probably eight or nine on a scale of one to 10 in terms of how much wind that I was, but I was, you know, from the, the first 50 to the fourth one, as I kind of went through a, a ladder of, of 12 was a drop from a, you know, a 40 to a 35. And that's a five, that's a 10 second drop per hundred, right? Obviously my effort was significantly higher, but that just means you have to repeat it, right? Doing 25s and 50s. But that's, again, it's, we talk about that all the time. And when we start working with athletes for the first time, they're like, man, I haven't done this many 25s and 50s in forever, right? Like, oh, you know, I'm doing long course. I need to do 500, 600, 800s where, but it sometimes just doesn't give you enough time to stop and reset. People like, oh, I'm training for, you know, it's it's interesting how people see swimming so differently than cycling, you know, and running. You know, you do 10 second, 15 second, minute, really, really, really hard intervals with a huge break. No, no one complains, right? And cycling and running, like, oh, bring it on, you know. You do that in swimming, you're like, but, 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 but why? You know, why are we doing this? Because it, right. it gives you an opportunity to do a lot of things, to go anaerobic, but also it keeps it just short enough to where you have, because swimming is so complex, right? It's, you can, that's why it's so uh, frustrating and confusing for so many people because it's so technique driven, but people get lost and they just kind of continue. You, you can start doing a 300 even. I'm going to work on, I'm working on my catch. And after about a 75, now you're thinking about the grocery store, right? Or how many more laps you have left. And then you're like, what did I even work on again? So really you just practice going the same pace with the same form for a 300. So while you might've increased maybe a little bit of endurance, you didn't really get anywhere. So that's just a, a, a healthy reminder for all athletes, no matter what you're doing is 25s, 50s, 75s, 100s. So those should be most athletes, honestly, bread and butter, anaerobic technique. And then, you know, I always like to end out with some, uh, a good bit of pulling. Mm. I mean, for my money, you said people look at swimming differently than cycling and, and running, not only from the break and the recovery stuff, but like for my money, I look at all three almost the same in a, in a way because mm-hmm. it's just the same motion. It's a rotation of your, you know, your legs or your arms or whatever. And in theory, it would seem like if you had a perfect cadence on both sides, that would make everything easier. Right. Right. And like you're saying, you know, like Katie Ledeck gets more out of her right arm. And I think that's very natural for everyone. I think most people get more out of their strong leg. Right. In, in running. Yeah, exactly. And, you in know, cycling. But the goal seems to me, like if you started from scratch as a kid and you weren't, you know, you weren't dominant in one hand or arm or, or leg, you would want to be balanced. So the balance of that is the, is the big thing. So like what you're saying about him swimming. And how he just kind of goes through it and there's no, no hooks or delays Mm -hmm. that that to me, that seems like the ideal thing to, to work on as a triathlete in running, biking and swimming is to get that balance because it just makes more sense that it would be easier if your body is in sync, you know, you don't like do a pedal stroke and like go harder on your right leg than you do your left. Right. Like, so it's the same type of thing in swimming and people know the timing. And I always talk about the metronome of swimming like uh-huh. when i'm swimming my best i'm just kind of like pop 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 pop. it's not like a whoosh, 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 you know like i i get overworked that way um but those are excellent sound effects by the way thank you <laughs> that's for stellar <laughs> but you know what i'm saying so uh yeah that swimming thing is uh it's just so easy in the sport i think to lean on your stronger side is what i'm getting at yep. and that's why i like to really try to work my weak side and lead when I that's my thing with counting if I'm counting strokes or pedals or cadence or anything I always try to count my left side first Mm -hmm. like lead with it so it it mentally starts becoming a little more dominant throughout the session yeah no anyway you know I mean it's it's no it's a great point I mean and most people will say like you know for me specifically like this morning I got in the pool I swam late yesterday afternoon I haven't done any back-to-back swims I'm just doing kind of Monday Wednesday Friday but I swam yesterday afternoon. I probably can't get in the pool Friday, Saturday, Sunday with everything we got going on in town. So I went ahead. So I got two swims in less than 24 hours. So I knew I was going to be kind of a little bit more tired and fatigued. My first two to 400 just felt clunky, right? Mm-hmm. Just kind of, cause again, like you said, 
swimming is, is so much about rhythm, right? And, and uh, technique and, you know, mo- keeping your momentum going and, and you're catching the right time and you're kicking the right time. My first two to 250, even my first few 25s, I was like, man, I feel off. I just feel really, really off. Um, and just like I have no rhythm. And so that's when, and, in the, and what usually happens for athletes is they try to force it, right? Like, I'm just, okay, I'm just going to swim faster. But when I feel, it's at least in the pool, when I feel clunky, I'm like, all right, test things out. Kind of like I said, in terms of like, all right, maybe. So I, I went through, honestly, so I did, my set for today was I did warm up for 500, then I did uh, 1625s, and then I went down to doing 1250s. Where in the 1625s, all the 25s I did, I came in around 19 or 20. The first few, I was like, this feels a little, I'm just, that's not fast enough for today. Like I should be a little bit faster. So I change one thing and then I get, you know, a couple tenths slower, a couple tenths faster. I'm like, okay, I'm not really changing anything. What am I doing wrong? That's making me feel clunky. And so I finally figured out that I would, that it was my, the big thing for today was my head position was just, it was way too low. And that was the first thing I was able to noticeably do, which again, like there's, there's so many things you can do in, in running and cycling and swimming to break up the monotony. That's why it's such a great sport, right? It's like, even if one sport is taken away because you're injured or you're on vacation, like you have three choices, right? You have three things to do. So like, there are so many opportunities within both. For some reason, swimming does always continuously get to get lumped into this, you know, I got to go easy. I got to go slow. And then obviously race day is totally different, but in cycling and running, it's all about, Oh, I got to embrace the suck and I got to like, smash it. And I got to, you know, try to raise my FTP and, you know, I got to do more speed work. I got to hit the track. And you're like, well, why don't you have that feeling and thoughts about swimming? You know, it's like you, you, know, you have to swim hard, but keeping it short allows you those opportunities to kind of think through it. And I think that's why if you really want to fall in love with swimming and you haven't, or you, have or you've been in the past but aren't right now breaking it up to small very uh, accessible and attainable 1500 2000 yard sets to where you're just doing maybe you know 200 warm up and then 25s and 50s like that's super manageable you know you can make it one or the other but don't just go through the motions take time right to to do things one way and then figure out okay that's not working right and then cuz on occasion for me I can be for short periods. I can be faster breathing to my left than I can to my right um, because I get to open up more uh, on my left side, and I still know I have a. And then I have my right side dominant strength on my left side, so I, it actually helps me go faster for a twenty-five or fifty. But when it comes to going all out and dropping a lot of seconds, I have to go specific. I have to go only to the right side, right? And those just little things you can learn about yourself. And, and I think that's what makes, again, is, is why somebody gets such a bad rap. People get so bored with it. A, they don't see improvement. B, they just don't know what to think about, right? It's kind of like playing a game in within training. And I think that's just one of the things that athletes don't do enough in training to kind of keep themselves engaged. Like when I went out to, uh, I rode the trace last weekend. I went out there, I said about a two and a half hours, you know, easy ride alone, you know, and you're like, man, that's a long time to kind of be alone out there. Even for a guy like me, you know, and you're the same way, like we pretty much do 99% of our training alone. Uh Um, it still is like, all right, what's going to help keep me engaged to be out here the longest. And even within those kind of longer rides, you can pick something specific, right. To work on, like whether you can play a game with yourself, like people do these things all the time on the trainer, right. Or on the treadmill, they'll, you know, you know, if you're watching a, a game, you'll, you know, take it easy and then you'll sprint during the commercials, right? Or you'll do two songs easy and one song hard, right? You know, you're, you're going to change it, you know, big gear for five minutes easy. Like, so there are all these kind of things. So for me, it was, all right, I'm going to do, I'm going to stay in arrow for all the hills. And then I'm going to sit up on the downhills and just kind of spin easy. But today I'm going to work big gear in arrow to give myself something very, very, very specific. And I was going to disregard uh, mileage. And I was going to disregard miles per hour. All I cared about that day was arrow, air, being an arrow and getting big gear work. And then I wanted to see if I could get 3000 feet of climbing in two and a half hours. That was it. There's, but so there's little things within each individual um, session that we do that if you're a person who has trouble staying focused or you, you know, you get, um, distracted easily, or you look at something without actual specific, you know, uh, a 45 minutes run, Oh, you know, can I have, you know, something to kind of keep your mind engaged? Think about something on your own, you know, to kind of make things a little more exciting, but also keep it within the, you know, the spirit of the workout. Yeah. That's a big one too. I think people get bored and they, they struggle running easy and slow. Mm-hmm. And then I actually had that 
comment this morning and I was like, you know, just mix in some pickups, man, or find a hill or do something. And, you know, cause we, I think it's one of those things where if you put out like, you know, I always tell people to run their first two miles or three miles of Ironman, like three to four minutes slower than they want their pace to be for the whole race. And the reason I do that is cause it's, it's hard to actually go that slow. And I figure like they're going to be going two minutes two faster. Minutes, than exactly. I saw. Exactly. So same thing with the even running slow. Most people don't do it like to prescription for their zone two heart rate or whatever. Um, but when you're out there, I mean, like it's just guideline, man, you know, like you don't have to like make it the worst boring crap mm-hmm. ever. Go, you know, throw some things in there and mix it around. I mean, I, I, that's my life really is just trying to figure out ways to make uh, any kind of thing like that more exciting. And just one more thing on the swimming thing when you're that back to when you said you felt clunky. Mm-hmm. I think so many people feel clunky because they're in their head. They're not swimming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the other thing I, I really try to work on when I'm swimming is just, I think about like what, I see good swimmers look like Mm -hmm. and I try to just kind of feel like that, even though I'm sure I don't look nothing like it, but in my mind, it's just a fluid relax and let go of the arms and the release of the arms to actually do what they're going to do rather than kind of going, okay, the left arm needs to go, you know, Mm -hmm. like that shit, you know, just kind of like disengage the, the restriction of it all. And let the arms just kind of keep going around, you know, it's just sort of like, that's why I say when I, when I started mountain biking, the guys, the best tip they ever gave me was just, just keep spinning, dude, mm-hmm. going up hill, just keep spinning, keep spinning. And that's the same mentality of swimming. You know, it's like, you can't just stop. You just, you want your rhythm to keep coming around or whatever. So there's, um, you know, when we would have people, um, in, in the endless pool, a lot of times, especially for athletes that taught themselves how to swim. Um, the, you know, we always let people kind of swim for, you know, three, four or 500 yards, just kind of get loose, get used to the environment and just kind of relax there. There were a lot of times where they would stop and I could say, I, within your stroke, I can see you thinking and checking off yeah. a, a to-do list because yeah. they're so, and what happens is, is that you, you totally, you don't have a flow, right? You don't have a rhythm. You can't have a fast turnover because your brain can't think that fast. So what happens is, and it, it, again, it's especially true for swimming because it is so technique based is, you know, they'll be like, all right, I got to dive in the water here. All right. Now I have to do the catch all right now. I have to pull, you know, uh, undo the zipper around my body because that's what I was taught by my master swim coach. And then I got to drag my thumb up. Then I got to have a elbow. Then I'm going to place it here. And I'm like, that all took five seconds, right? <laughs> because your stroke is taking literally that long to get done. That's not fast. You will never be fast doing that. So you can see people, like you said, thinking so much that they think themselves into, you know, you hear the term, you know, paralysis by analysis. People do that more on swimming than anything else. They, they, they try to methodically place and push and position and exit doing all these things. I'm like, you don't want to have six strokes within one, right? Or six steps. You want to have a stroke. Right. Yes, yep. there are certain small things you can do within your stroke to speed it up or slow it down or to make it faster or to to increase more strength or do whatever it is. But you ha- most people would be just much better off just swimming as, you know, as fast as you know, with t- take one or two things that make the most sense to you. Right. And, and the other people don't nearly focus on this in cycling because it's just your legs. People also do it all the time in running. Like oh you know I was, I was I went to my uh, my PT and he said you know I really need to I really need to become a four foot striker, really why why ask this question why you can watch the Olympic trials and marathon trials they every one of them in the first two miles we had you know heel strikers you had midfoot you had four foot like stop trying to change things just to change things right mm-hmm. you know do you think you know and everybody that likes to use you can even look at the men's the men's pro field take the first uh, the first three. Guys that won Ironman St. George, Blumenfeld, totally different run, uh, run stride uh, and te- kind of technique than the guy who got second. Lionel Sanders, obviously he has the most unique kind of run. He has like a hop, skip, and a jump, but he motors his way through. And then you had uh, Braden Curry, who people, he's a kind of long, kind of lumbering, swinging stride. Do you think they spend time focusing on their forefoot strike or their midfoot strike? No, they focus on running, right? Because that's one of the things that, that that are very, that's so similar between 
running and something, they have a ton of similarities because their whole body, right? Mm-hmm. You know, cycling, it just, we have our lower legs and they just kind of spin the same motion no matter what, right? <laughs> you got your crank arms, you got your, you got your pedals, the contact points, your cleat, you don't really have a choice, right? <laughs> but to spin the right. exact same, obviously your knees can go in and out, tidal height and all that kind of stuff. But for running, you know, and swimming, everyone has this natural, they have a natural cadence to them too. The same thing on the bike. Some people are naturally, you know, 70, 75, just kind of, they just, they're more efficient, big gear. Some people are better off spinning higher. It's what happens. And we try to force ourselves to be something that we're not is when injuries happen is when you uh, sometimes get slower, you get out of rhythm. Some people are better with a long and strong stroke, right? Some, you know, uh, take like some of the top athletes in the world that swim the 800 and the 1500. They look totally different, right? The, the best thing you can do is figure out what works best for you and then totally buy into perfecting that and being the best you can be at the way you have it. Mm-hmm. Don't try to be, you know, people will watch like, you know, Michael Phelps and, and some of these other swimmers have these long, strong, I'm like, he has arms that are nine feet long. You don't, yours are four feet, right? Like stop, you know, <laughs> that was one thing that I said, like you, you have orangutan arms and you're swimming like a t-rex okay don't do that like you know swim with what Mm. you got like you know use your morphology you know same goes for the flip side if you're an athlete who has who's kind of shorter has or maybe has you know shorter torso shorter arms don't be long you got to be fast right you know like janet evans perfect like the windmill and the straight arm recovery she was 400 800 50 minute like world record holder american swimmer from the 80s and 90s you look at her and you're thinking god well she is just so not you know long and strong she was just like, like just, but she was faster than anybody else in the world, right? So please, then that's one of the things you, you, people spend so much time trying to break themselves down to kind of read, like first things first, maximize what you have, right? Because more than likely you had this natural cadence with this natural, uh, you know, arm swing or stroke for a reason, right? Because your body is compensating or not compensating for something is it, our body knows itself, right? And sometimes we get ourselves into so much trouble. And I've said this so many times, I think specifically in some of our earlier podcasts, that I've seen more athletes get injured, not from mileage, okay, but from trying out new shoes or trying to, you know, back in the day when people wore those absolutely idiotic, like, you know, barefoot shoes, you know, the, the five finger <laughs> shoes. I'm like, why don't you go run track workouts and Crocs? That's pretty much the same thing. Or when, they tra- or when they try to change their foot strike from going to a hill strike, they immediately stress fracture. Why? Well, cause you went from placing all of your body weight leaned back with less momentum on your heel, right? I think it's your calcaneus, maybe a bone. It's way out of my wheelhouse on this one. Just confirm me on that one. Um, calcaneus. The, the much, a much denser bone. And then you're going on your forefoot, which is a lot thinner and you, and which with more momentum and more force. And you wonder why you get, so I've seen more people in the past make idiotic shoe choices and try to, well, you know, the PT at my local run club, he said that I need to move to a forefoot strike. And you're like, why? I didn't ask why, you know, I just took it from, you know, Johnny May at the community college. who just got his PT degree, but he showed up at the run club and I think he's an expert. So I decided to you know, change my foot strike and now I get a stress fracture, right? People ha- do these things all the time for really no reason. Instead of just taking the best you can do is spend 90 to 95% of your time and effort doing the, going with what you have to work with and figuring out that best way to be that, because that's where you're going to get the biggest investment. And then once you get up to a point, right? Where you're having to obsess about hopping the wind tunnel for your bike or, you know, making a small, you know, minute change for, you know, a distance from it's going to save them a half second, you know, in a hundred, which is the difference between getting first and sixth. Mm-hmm. Like that's, they focus on those things, but they don't focus on them for the whole time. Right. And that's just, that's, that's a, an obsession that I think athletes find themselves getting into because they, they read the wrong things or a lot of athletes when they are trying to get remotivated, use that as like a, a method to get more like, well, I need, I need to really need to focus on this. Or I'm like, well, why? Well, I feel like I need to focus. Cause they need something to focus on. Focus on getting consistent first, be consistent, get fit. And then once you do that up to an extent, then you can start. Cause it's, it's you get the cake, you get the icing, you still need the sprinkles. This is like, you know, the little bitty tiny piece on top that you put very, very last, you know, like the little figurine or something like, you know, a, a toy story, figuring right, out for yeah. your kids like it's like the, the, the last the final the, tweak the final 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 thing but most people go in the reverse they, yeah, go, they go yeah they go they go you know figurine on top of the cake sprinkles icing i don't need a cake uh, that 
to me, I mean, you said they a lot of times they for no reason they'll just do so. I it, to me, it's always about overthinking stuff. And uh, when you when you try to that when I was saying I I swim, I try to swim like swimmers. I just imagine how fluid they look and just. Like you're saying, try to be within my body, my stroke or whatever, just but to release it because the minute you're you overthink it, you're done. You know, uh, I can't remember if I mentioned the um, Zen in, in the art of archery in this podcast or if I was talking to somebody else about it. It's a it's a, it's a before or after we're cleaning our oatmeal. Yeah, bowl. <laughs> it's yeah, it might, it might have been around the same Similar, time. Yeah, but I ended up finding it. That's an old, old book. But I heard an interview when they were talking, somebody was talking about it. I can't remember what it was, but uh Basically, the point of it is, is um, when you're shooting archery, um, there's I guess it's very patient. I, I, I don't know a lot about the sport, but, um, you know, you, you, you kind of take your target and you pull, you know, it's real slow, methodical, yeah. like patient aiming and a ton of breathing goes breathing, into it as well. It's like yep. very steady. It's like it has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And the, the point this guy was making is he said, you can't think about shooting. The minute you think to shoot, you're too late. So it has to be reaction. Mm-hmm. And there's something so profound about that with triathlon to me, uh, because we always talk about racing smart and thinking and then being smart and doing, mm-hmm. you know, but that doesn't mean in the moment, like you plan that stuff out ahead. Like, you, you know, you got a big downhill coming, how you're going to handle that curve. You don't think your way through it when you're going 50 miles an hour. You got to be like, all right, the, the, I know that downhill's coming so I can relax a little bit going on this uphill, that kind of thinking and being smart on the race course. But most stuff is just reactionary. Yep. And that's through, like you're saying, building uh, repetition and, and having habits and being strong and, and controlling where you are before you try to do something else. You know, it's like, well, I, I, I'm kind of weak right now, but I'm going to try and, you know, elongate my stride because I know that's the way I should be running, but you're not ready for it. So you, you need to, you know, train like you can train so you can train like you need to yeah, train or if, whatever. If, it's yeah, the same type of thing you with change things, your yeah. form and things like that. And that's a big deal. You know, it's like we get so caught up in seeing like, you know, it would have been like you seeing that, uh, those guys swimming the other day and just immediately copying their story. Right. Their exactly. Stroke, you know? Yeah. But you can't, it's I, just, I don't, I don't have the fitness suit. Like I might be able to do it for like, I might be able to keep up for like, I don't know, six yards. But that's, you could get in, in the pool. People probably get injured trying crazy shit like that or trying to do like, you know, 25 strokes per, tw- you know, 25 or, you know, just really high mm-hmm. turnover and stuff like that, that you're not capable of uh, for more than maybe 25 yards. But, uh, it's all that, that, that being in the moment and just like being with yourself is so important to me and, and just being able to, it's, I just find that fascinating that if you, the minute you think about it, it's too late. And that's really what makes, I mean, you think about hitting a baseball or, or great NBA players that just, they're not thinking about their move. They're just nope. creating it on the move. Yep. Yeah. Practice and fitness gives you the ability to be intuitive yeah. and to be reactionary. It's like mountain biking is a great example. Yeah. You can't mm-hmm. stare right in front of you because by the time you see it, it's too late. Yeah. You know, you have to look down the trail and it's the same thing with trail running. You have to look down. You can't look smack dab in front of you because by the time you can't make that adjustment that quick. You have to look down there than have already made the adjustment so you know what to do by the time you're passing over it as you're looking six to ten feet down the trail, mm-hmm. right? And mountain biking, when you see people crash on them, because they're staring at their front wheel. It's too late. They don't know what to do. You should have already thought ahead. You know, one of the things, is it relevant or not, but I, think I, find it, I found it fascinating when you're talking about archery is when I was watching the Winter Olympics, they were, they were doing the uh, biathlon, they would, when they would come down, I think it's called the prone position when they're laying on the ground to, to shoot, right? They do have this huge aerobic, anaerobic event where they're cross country skiing and then they grab their rifle and they, you know, shoot it standing. And then I think on winning and then laying down, what they would do is when they would stop, they would take these like, however many, five, six, seven, like real deep breaths and then hold their breath. So when they're shooting, they're not having the, you know, their lungs. You know, yeah. They're not having any, wow. they're not having any movement. So to have that, just little things like that, that are so detailed, but make so much sense, but they're not going to focus on that piece of it until they can shoot a target fresh, <laughs> right? And then, you know, cross country ski, and you know, get to where you have a certain number of aerobic endurance, be able to shoot 
perfectly fresh, standing still. Then we'll start to add more fatigue in it. But people are so obsessed with going the opposite way. Like, well, you know, if you got to, you know, gonna run faster to be faster. I'm like, well, yeah, but you have to actually also be able to run a lot to get faster to have a durability to hold it. You know, kind of like you said about if I had to try to emulate those guys swim speed, I would have lasted all about halfway before I had to stand up and probably walk my way to the end of the wall. Right. So mm-hmm. did I practice anything? No, I just did it once. And now I'm too shelled to even do it again. Like people try so hard to pick up five things at one time. You can't, you know, it's, it's, you, you end up doing, you know, 45 things halfway and you have nothing finished. And, and that's, that's so much with the sport in general is people get distracted so easy because there are so many things and, and so much, so much is sold and so much talked about and so much is marketed, you know, that you have to do this or have to do that. I need, I need to change this and go to this, you know, different uh, training strategy or, or different foot strike, or, you know, I think I need a different bike or I think I need different crank arms. You're like, well, you've only biked twice in the last three weeks. Why don't you just bike more? And then we can worry about what's <laughs> yeah. actually going to be best for you. But that's not triathlon. It's more about how much money can I spend? How can I stay on trend? And, you know, what can I do that's different than what everybody else is doing? Or, you know, hop on the bandwagon of what I think, you know, one person is doing. You know, it's like you always see the the websites of the one guy or the one girl who did it this one way, right? And they're like, oh, well, for nineteen ninety nine, you can have all the secrets to the 10-hour Ironman on just eight hours a week of training. And then you're like, oh, I can do that. I'm buying in. Then look at backstory, you know, collegiate rower, you know, 15 years competitive swimming. You're like, oh, that's not me. Right. But people always look for that. They don't look at the the hard work and the journey and the consistency. We're just people are obsessed with the with the shortcut or what makes things easier. Even the shortcut gets you lost and your car breaks down. Well, I took the shortcut and I dropped, you know, 1999 to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cars break down. <laughs> cars do. Cars do break down. <laughs> yeah, I saw. You. I saw your car. Actually, I wasn't the one that saw your car yesterday. Gone. Oh no. The, the last few days, Hayden, before he goes to school, has been like, "Hey, you know, I want to. Um, hey, can I go run?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Can I run shirtless?" I'm like, "I mean, sure, if you want to." Like, you know, like he wears uh-huh. a uniform to school. I'm like, "Dude, rock it, man." Um, you know, go ahead and go for it. So we get out there and we ran the day before. And then yesterday we're coming around the corner. He's been doing some big laps, like up to around here, up to up to Main Street, coming around, going on the Polk. He's been putting in some pretty solid laps. And uh, some days I'm like, dude, just slow, like endurance pace here, like zone two. I mean, you have to go zone three. I like, hey, I just had a cup of coffee. But we rolled by your park space, like, Mr. Mike's car's gone. Because <laughs> he has this, he has this obsession. We're like, what time are you awake? He's like, oh, yeah. he's like, is Mike up? I'm like, no, he's not up. <laughs> what time does he get up? Eh, he's flexible, right? He, he's he's pretty flexible on uh on what time he gets up. On the fuck around. Yeah, he's he's, he's flexible on the fuck around. Uh-huh. Yeah, I will uh, I will have to say that um that yeah, was in the shop. Yeah, it was in the shop. Yeah, I I do a little well check to make sure you were uh, taken care of. Yeah, you checked in. You're like, hey, are you all right? <laughs> it was like yeah, eight o'clock. Was the was car it? was the gone. car was gone already. I was like, yeah, I was driving around yesterday. I I'm uh cleaning out here, so I took a bunch of CDs out to McKay's. And books. Did you? Yeah. I love McKay's. I know. I, I, I love them too. And I, I, I've been reading a lot of these Zen things. So I went in there. Yeah, my, my, I was like, hmm, archery. just chill because I know you're bringing in about uh, 1500 to $2,000 worth of retail priced CDs and books over the years. <laughs> and then they gave me $50. <laughs> and uh, as it turned out, they gave me an $8 credit. And that's how I ended up buying Zen and the archery book so i was like see such I, a great business it, it, model it would have never oh yeah because they give you like 50 cents and sell up books for eight dollars yeah it's pretty sweet it's a great business model. uh but anyway so i'm driving back from there and i'm like hmm, my ac doesn't really work right now it feels like it's hot it's not working and then i noticed the coolant light was on and then i noticed the temperature gauge starting to go to the oh boy the red and so i flipped on the heat i'm driving home just freaking out like no please don't blow please yeah, don't, blow. don't blow get me home yeah so uh i made it and, you made uh, it man yeah that was the endurance athlete you you didn't balk you made it you troubleshooted yeah straight to the dealer straight, the, <laughs> straight, straight to the not to the dealer guy. no it's <laughs> straight, not, straight to the, the tire guy. guys they're they're my man um, yeah, i like them yeah. well uh yeah we're uh we're gonna close out before we before we go do you have any parting words for our, mm-hmm. our encouragement for our, our, our listeners yeah go get them <laughs> <laughs> Go get um, yeah. So back in November, <laughs> I remember this specifically 
And you might remember it too. I feel like I, I'm not sure if I do or not, but okay. I feel like I do. So uh, chat 70.3 is going through their tiers or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I better sign up. So I, it's in November. <laughs> I think it was in November. <laughs> and uh, so I sat down and I signed up for chat. And then two weeks later, you came in and, and it was like final call or whatever. Yeah. And you go, hey, you doing chat? Did you better you sign, sign up. up? Yep. And I go, I just did two weeks ago. You remember that? I, I think I feel like I do remember that. Yeah. Cause, cause it was like, I think it might've been sold out and you came in you're like, yeah, did you get in? And I was like, yep, I got in two weeks. And then, uh, yesterday was it yesterday or two days ago? And I will say two like days. we, we, I mentioned this on a zoom call, I think three months ago, cause this race, we, you know, we sent out a, 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 a season form for athletes. Like, you know, list all your race out there, a races, B races. Well, if we had like, I had like four or five, like a trending a race. Mm-hmm it's not an A race unless you sign up for it. Cause we had a, at least four or five people like, Hey, I didn't sign up for chat and now it's sold out. I'm like, well then it's not your A race for sure. Cause it's you're no longer, your it's no longer doing it's your zero race. Um, but you texted me, uh, yesterday, two days ago, maybe. Yeah. Two days ago and said, uh, cause Molly emailed me and she's like, Hey, I don't mean, I don't want to make you panic <laughs> or anything, but I tried Good to put Molly you in Morgan. the tracker. And uh, you're not in there. You're not in the tracker. I'm like, well, that's got to be worse. <laughs> so I went to the participation list, and sure enough, I'm not on it. So all I can think of was that maybe I went through the thing, and I hit submit and uh, walked away. And you know how, like, it probably popped up and said, no, we need your uh, oh yeah social security. No, or Are you sure your- you don't want to have an active.com membership? Yeah, for something like that. And then it just, like, timed out on me or something. Maybe. I don't know. Cause I could have, I would almost bet my life that I signed up on it or the, yeah, they stepped in and said, sure. yeah, he's no, we've heard this guy on the podcast, uh, he's, not, <laughs> he's not racing. Our but race. yeah. So initially I was like, Oh man, bummer. But then I was like, well, my Zen came through and I said, <laughs> your archery. And your I, I, well, I afforded someone else the opportunity to That's race right. by not signing up evidently. But, uh, I was a little bummed just because I wanted to see how, I could do on a limited training schedule. That was, I was just more curious than anything. But then after I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I'm actually kind of, you know, okay with it because I, you got to move afterwards. I got to move from after a, from next a guy week. who's done it before and got shingles. You don't want to, you don't want to move, I know. I know. drive a lot in race. I told um, you I had shingles for the full last year. I didn't tell anybody though. Yeah. I mean, I, was I, like, I, they went away just at game time, but, yeah. uh, nobody wants shingles. No, 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 no. So, and plus, you know, we got a lot of people racing. It's, you know, maybe for the best. And my, the last time I raced here is my PR. I I don't want to go out on a a bad note. Just leave it. No need to. Leave it right there. Last time I did it, I crushed it. (laughs) But I don't. Divine intervention. Uh, Yeah. So I will be on the sidelines. Full coach. you on. Full on You're wearing on coach coach day. You know, a lot of coaches wear their polo on coach day. Uh, on, oh, on, yeah. Yeah, race day. Are you wearing a polo? I'm, I'm running right out of the transition with them all the way down, you know. <laughs> I'm side by never. side. Uh, I might rock work the polo. On a four foot gate. Four foot <laughs> gate. Four foot gate. Engage those hammies. Engage those glutes. <laughs> crossing over. Crossing over. How much sodium are you taking in this very instant? Be patient. Uh, Rip it. Take, uh, name, take names in the back 10K. Yeah. Uh, just be standing at the top of the bridge with, you, yeah, man. with your arms crossed. Um, yeah, you'll never care. I, I'll, I'll probably rock a it polo. Up. One more loop. Suck it up. That's right. One more loop. <laughs> just get it done. Okay. <laughs> Find a way. Get it done. Um, that's it. That's all we got. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. We hope to see a lot of you uh, this weekend over the next three days. Uh, yeah. Which well, you, got, you got something we else? We both got our cuts. We too. did. We have our uh, our coaches' cuts for coaches this weekend. Cuts. Yeah, we're not, yeah. Neither one of us racing. We have our coaches' cuts and our expo. Our expo trims, uh, Frankie was back and she took, she took great care of me. That's good. Uh, it was great to see her. It was um, great to see my girl too. I actually, she had a funny story that I want to tell. Cause you know how like, uh, well, the, she was telling me about her husband and her husband's friend who had a, a fantasy football league thing. Mm-hmm. And, and the, if you lost the punt, like you got last place, they had a punishment. And I thought it was funny because it was actually last, I don't know, whenever the half marathon is here or whatever. I want to say November, December. I yeah, well, like, maybe like they're not Earlier athletes half. at all. Yeah. These guys, evidently, they're not athletes. They're just kind of party guys or whatever. So they said the last place guy either had to do the half marathon, like it was like the next week or something, <laughs> or their other option was they had to take the ACT test, but they had to get a certain score and they had to take it over and over again <laughs> until they got it. <laughs> oh, dude, that's the dude picked a half marathon. <laughs> like I would have too. <laughs> I just thought that was the funniest shit ever. I mean, you could. I, I mean, I just you know, love little guys from Stanford to take it for you. I guess 
take the AC. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that sounds absolutely. Remember. It's like me, like back in high school when the I was, you know, admittedly I was to my mother's chagrin. I was, I was, I talked back a little bit, and there was this one science teacher that hated me, mm. and I gave it back a little bit. I was, you know, shocker. I was kind of a smart ass, and I had sixty demerits in the last semester of my junior year. Sixty. Sixty. Um, enough for doing anything, you know, evil, just kind of, you know, talking back a little bit, you know, and then make people laugh. And, um, and so it was either, you can do six hours of Saturday school and clean the gum off desks, or you can take, this is like a private, like quote unquote church of Christ school back in the nineties, like, or you can 60 have lashes or you can have six licks, licks, oh. yeah, t- t- 10, 10 demerits is one lick means like the, this huge paddle. wooden, wooden paddle that our football coach and I played football he was a disciplinarian slash athletic director uh, and had holes in it. So he could oh, yeah. swing it. He could swing, could, it. You know, yep, swing it. Yeah, swing it. And he'd get there and he'd be like, all right. He'd, he'd like rub it on your butt. Like, I'm not going to hit you here. I'm going to hit you here. The back of the leg, like upper thigh. So when it came down to six hours of Saturday school or six licks, I'm like, bring me the six licks, please. <laughs> really? <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I want it done and over. I want to spend six hours on Saturday school. That's like the same as like me trying to take the ACT. Like, nah, I'll run a half untrained. Give it to me. Yeah. They don't do that anymore, do they? Uh, they're probably not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. They're probably, they're probably definitely not allowed. But yeah, like I had my uh, share of... Uh, trending on Twitter. Oh, for trending, trending everywhere. Yeah, it would be trending everywhere. Um, if, you got, if you got a C or below, yeah, he, went, he went through like football grades. Yeah. And if you'd made anything under a B... A B was one lick, a D was two, and an F was three. And you got those licks in front of the, the team. Wow. I had a lot of Bs. A lot of Bs. And then that was like good for me because I was not the most, uh, I wasn't I, not much of a school guy. Uh, but who, if you're a podcast person and you enjoyed today, as always, go to our website, c26triathlon.com. It's our one-stop shop for all things coaching, camps, and community. If you're looking for coaching the rest of the year, click on our coaches tab. Check out the roster of coaches that we have. Uh, hope to see a lot of you this weekend. If you need anything specifically from Mike, he's available, crushingiron at gmail.com. If you need anything from me, c26coach at gmail.com. Was that bare ass? No. Okay. I had a little bit of a denim cushion. <laughs> All right. Hey, come down to the expo come tent. Come to the expo. We'll, ha- we'll be there. We have the tent. It's still in the box. We hope it works. <laughs> Seriously. We, we shipped to us. We never bought one, but we're hoping they packed it right and we can just kind of Unbox it and it kind of explodes and yeah, pops, like a, it, pops out those, <laughs> like one of those Instagram so- tents <laughs> yeah, or one of those like soccer goals for your kids. You like unwrap it, bam, pops up and it's up. But if not, we'll be looking at we'll be looking to a lot of you to help us uh, put this thing up around. I don't know, eleven, twelve at the expo. Come hit us up. Yeah, if you're if you're technically, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna say it right now. If you help us, you help us set up our tent. Free water bottle. <laughs> just putting it out there. <laughs> if you're in just, town early, just putting it if out you help there. Help us man. set up the tent. You get a free water bottle. Yeah, that's it. You're welcome. Is anything in it? In the water bottle? Water. Love. Love. Lots of love. <laughs> just a whole lot of love. Yeah. All right. All right. See, see you down there. Good luck, everybody. Yeah.